Thank you for joining our GLE, Exploring Nature Inside and Out. Okay, so to get started, uh, we'll discuss the importance of nature exploration. Humans are born with an attraction to nature and that desire to connect begins in early childhood. And so this is the optimal time to nurture that connection by offering children positive experiences with nature and natural elements. Research has indicated that nature-based experiences promote learning and development in eight key ways. Firstly, exposure to greenery contributes to improved attention and concentration in young children. At the same time, it has proven stress reducing effects, including decreased heart rate and lower cortisol levels. Also contact with nature boosts self-discipline in children um, and studies show that they exhibit better impulse control during and after interactions with natural elements. Additionally, learning in and around nature is associated with intrinsic motivation, which leads to higher levels of enjoyment and active engagement in young children. Also, there is a direct link between time spent outdoors in nature and level of physical activity and fitness in children. And this is really an important component in combating the rising rates of childhood obesity in the United States. Furthermore, natural settings are correlated with a calmer, more peaceful learning environment and therefore reduce challenging behaviors. On a similar note, it fosters warmer, more cooperative social interactions between children and finally, the loose parts found in nature, such as sticks, stones, dirt, and water, promote child development by encouraging creative self-directed play, leading to increased autonomy in children. All of these components contribute to improved learning outcomes for young children. Next, we're going to explore the ways um, that you can incorporate nature into the different learning areas. And I'm gonna start with science. So young children are natural scientists full of wonder and excitement about the world around them. Science allows children to explore, experiment, question, discover, and understand natural and human-made objects and forces. Experiments and activities with science and nature also stimulate children's curiosity, encourage use of all five senses, and help to build vocabulary. With that being said, science and nature really go hand in hand. So there are so many ways to incorporate uh, nature into your science projects. One concept you can explore with the children is weather. So for an indoor activity, you can make a pine cone weather station. For this activity, all you need is pine cones, which you can either gather yourself or have the children help collect during outdoor play. Um, bring them inside and place the pine cones along a window seal, and this will serve as your weather station. Each day you can have the children observe the pine cones and record whether they're open or closed. Pine cones open up in dry weather and they close in damp weather. So not only does this activity teach children about the properties of pine cones, but it also encourages learning and conversation about different types of weather. Um, you can ask the children to guess whether the pine cones will be open or closed based on the weather and be sure to track their observations over time. Uh, you can also use this activity as an opportunity to introduce new vocabulary such as humidity. For your outdoor weather activity, you can build your own rain gauge. Um, so for this, you'll need scissors, a two liter bottle, permanent marker, rocks, water, and measuring tape. Um, basically, you cut off the top of the bottle fill the bottom with rocks and water and use the measuring tape to mark one inch intervals on the bottle. Um, then you put the top back in upside down, set your rain gauge outside where it won't be disturbed um, and wait for it to rain. Uh, after the rain, have the children make predictions about how much they think has fallen and then check your gauge and record, record how high the water is. You can also look at local weather reports and compare your results with the official rainfall amount for that day. This activity is a fun way to get outside despite the rain, while also introducing children to the different stages of the scientific process of asking questions, making predictions, recording observations, and comparing results.
Next, we're going to talk about music and movement and outdoor music really ignites all areas of development and further enriches children's educational, educational play experiences. So musical instruments in your outdoor areas really creates endless learning opportunities and encourages children to explore and they're able to investigate different sounds, rhythms and beats. And the movement activity in your outdoor setting really allows children to experiment with their bodies in a safe place. There's a couple activities that you can do outdoors and then also modify them to bring that indoors. The first one is bucket drums and you can use buckets and paper towel rolls let children experiment with beats and sounds. Um, buckets are really easy to find. You can get them at like Lowe's or you can search for them at um, a thrift store. And then uh, for drumsticks, you can go a couple different options. You can collect items in nature, such as sticks, or you can just use those paper towel rolls, fill them up with something like paper towel or paper and wrap them with duct tape to just make them a little bit sturdier. If you want to bring this activity indoors, you can make it a little bit quieter by having the children drum with their hands instead of using um, sticks. Next one you can do is called dance and freeze. It's pretty simple. So when the music plays, the kids can dance. When the music stops, then they have to freeze. A few variations on this one. Um, it doesn't have to just be dancing. It could be any sort of movement. So maybe the children run and then they have to stop. If you wanna bring this activity indoors, um, you can, instead of dancing, have the children clap their hands and stop when the music stops or maybe stomp their feet. All ways that they're still getting to move, but um, they're also keeping their bodies safe if you don't have a big area for them to dance around. The next section is fine motor. So, you know, in addition to getting exercise and fresh air, kids can really hone their fine motor skills by playing outside. So fine motor skills are those skills that involve those coordinated movements of fingers, hands, or muscles. And these skills are really necessary for them to complete daily activities. So um, for them to be able to hold a spoon or a fork or dressing themselves, zipping up their coats, tying their shoes, coloring, writing, um, any of those small actions that you do with your hands are really important. So a couple of fine motor activities. Uh, one of the, a really fun one is a spray bottle race. And so you can just use a large container, something shallow, fill it with water, and then also get some toys that float. They don't have to be anything. You don't need to rush outside and, and buy some. You can just look for different things in your environment that float. And then the children spray the toys to get them to move around. You can race or you guys can just have fun spraying the toys and seeing what happens. This is also an easy activity to move inside because it's just using a shallow um, bucket with water. Um, also just, you know, it can get slippery. So make sure that you're putting something down if you're doing this activity inside and bringing those nature elements in. The next activity is popping bottle, bubbles. So this is a really great fine motor activity. Blowing, so you blow bubbles and then you challenge the kids to pop them with their index finger. And this really helps develop that hand-eye coordination and works on isolating fingers. So maybe you can do it with a, you can do it with their pinky finger or their thumb or their index finger. Just have them try different fingers. Um, if you want to make, kind of combine this activity with the movement activity, you can blow bubbles and do different things like having them pop it with their foot, make sure there's lots of space between them, but they can kick the bubbles. They can use their elbows to pop the bubbles. Um, lots of different variations on that one. I do not suggest doing this activity inside just because bubbles get really slippery. So this one's definitely just something you wanna do outdoor in nature. All right, so now we're gonna talk about language and l l l l literacy. Um, we know that children learn through play and when they learn through play, it creates a meaningful, um, a meaningful time for them. Um, and learning to read and write is, um, is 
um, just the same. So ways that we can incorporate na uh, nature into our language and literacy um, is by having a well-stocked library with books about nature and science concepts and making sure that a lot of those books have realistic pictures in them. Um, creating cozy places to read and write both indoors and outdoors, um, bringing natural items into your writing area. These can be things like rocks, sticks, feathers, pine cones, um, other natural items like that. Um, and then bringing writing materials outdoors, um, such as clipboards with paper and pencils so that the children can write and draw about what they are experiencing outdoors. And then creating a safe space for reading outside. Um, this can be done by using blankets that have um, a waterproof side on the bottom, um, chairs, um, easily cleanable beanbag chairs can also be used um, for, for outdoors. You don't have to have a dedicated reading area outdoors. If you have a small space with some um, weather safe books that can be easily cleaned if they get dirty and, and and wet you have a you know space to read outside and the activity that we're going to talk about that can be done indoors and outdoors is going to be let letter hunting um, and for this the materials you would need would be safe size rocks um, rocks that are appropriate for all ages of children. If you've got, you know, little ones, make sure that they can't be choked on. Um, Sharpie markers or paint, um, and then containers for um, collecting the rocks. Um, for the activity, you can um, prepare your letter rocks ahead of time, and then and then um, show them to the the children during your your group time, and let them know that you're going to be doing a le 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 letter hunt while you're outside. Um, allow the children to hunt for those for those rocks while they are playing outside and encourage them to name the letter and the um, the uh, sound. Um, you can bring this activity indoors by placing the rocks that all your children have found in your in your writing area. You can have um, sight words or letters that are already printed off and then have the children match um, the the correct letter to the the correct sight word. To, um, to help them create words. Um, and you can keep this budget friendly by saving your rocks and laminating your sight word sheet so that you can use it year after year. And dramatic play. So dramatic play allows children to make sense of the world around them. Um, and bringing nature themes into your dramatic play is a wonderful way for children to explore um, nature and science concepts. Um, so some ways you can bring nature into that into that area is by adding realistic plants or real real f f flowers to the to to the area. Um, create dramatic play themes such as um, gardening, floral shop, camping, hiking woodland zookeepers, et cetera, like that allows children to explore nature and science themes. And then if you don't have a dedicated area or space for dramatic play outside, you can create a box of dramatic play items that the children can take outside with them. And then the dramatic play theme that you can do both indoors and outdoors that we're gonna talk about is garden center. So some of the things that you could add to your um, dramatic play garden center would be books about, about gardening or other, uh, other plant books. Um, you wanna make sure that you, again, you're focusing on realistic pictures. Um, you can add real or fake plants. Um, Fake plants are probably a little more budget friendly because um, you can get the fake plants or real or fake flowers at the um, dollar store. Um, gardening tools, again, you can get those from the dollar store as well to keep it, you know, nice and, and cheap. Um, paper and pencils to take orders on, cash register with, with m m m money and you can extend the life of your, your play money by laminating it so that it doesn't get torn up as quite as quickly. Um, pots for planting in and then seed packets for, for selling. Um, for older children, you can um, have them help you 
maybe um, create price um, price tags for um, labeling different items that are for um, for sale, or they can help you to to create um, garden center. Um, posters and things like that. So the garden center theme allows children to act out that um, that real world role. It also helps to expose them to math concepts. So if you're, you know, putting a price on something or they're taking orders, they're, you know, you guys are exchanging, you know, dollars and giving back change, those types of things. It helps um, enhance writing because children can then write down um, um, the order they want. And then again, exploring, exploring the, the science concept, talking about plants, how they grow, how do you take care of you know, plants and what do they need? And again, this theme can be done indoors and, and outdoors. And if you wanna keep things budget friendly, um, again, buying most of your items at your local discount store, or um, you can ask parents to help, to help by donating old garden, you know, materials or seed packets, and then making sure that you're keeping those items so that you can use them year after year. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about how to bring nature into math learning. So learning math is how children learn to make sense of their world through problem solving and reasoning. Early math learning is foundational for all the math a child will learn as they progress through school. Here are some of the concepts young children learn through math learning. They learn about numbers. So learning about numbers for young children means how to recognize numbers, one-to-one -one correspondence and ordering and counting. They learn geometry and spatial relationships. And this means that they're learning shape recognition and how shapes relate to and fit together. So for example, how a puzzle piece might fit based on the shape and the color it is. They're learning measurement. And this includes making comparisons of length, height, volume and size and learning how to measure objects in unconventional ways. They're learning how to recognize patterns in the classroom and in their natural environment. And they're also learning how to analyze data. So sorting, comparing, coming to conclusions, using reasoning skills and learning how to interpret, interpret data, which for example, which number is biggest or smallest. So some ways that you can bring nature into your math learning inside is um, you can gather different shaped leaves from outside and do a sorting project based on the shape or color. Um, you can also use those same leaves to do a chart and find out what the class favorite leaf is and what their least favorite is, um, bringing in um, analyzing data. You can bring in different sizes of sticks and stones. Your students can organize them by size or sort them. And then the sticks can also be used as an un unconventional measurement tool. And then um, you can paint appropriately sized stones with numbers and put them into your math, um, math area. Um, you can also plant a fast growing plant like a bean and chart its growth over time to teach about measurement. Some ways that you can bring math outside is you can play a game called What Time Is It Mr. Fox? And this means that the children shout what time is it Mr. Fox? And the fox has to yell a time and the children have to move that amount of steps. This is a great game you can play with no additional materials, although having numbers a child can hold while, will tie in number recognition and can enrich this game with more math. Um, you can do activities by having children go and find things. For example, you can give them a card with a number on it and the dots to represent that number and ask them to go get four of something. So for example, four leaves or five dandelions or whatever it is that you have in your natural space. You can do that same graphing activity with the leaf outside um, by having children go and select their favorite leaf and to see what their favorites are and what their least favorite is. And then you can have your students identify basic shapes in their natural environment. You can bring a selection of pre-drawn shapes and encourage your students to find them while they're outside. They can even use these shapes to create um, shapes. Sorry, they can even create these shapes using leaves, rocks, sticks, or anything else that you have access to. Okay, and now we're going to talk about the creative arts. So art's important um, in early learning for several reasons, and I'm going to go through some of those right now. So the first one is art really helps with motor skills. Um, with young children, fine motor skills are developing, and art can help children 
all the way from starting at infants all the way through pre-k to learn and hone skills such as using their pincer grasp, dexterity, precision, and more. Um, art is often not done with infants, but it can be um, used with, make sure it is very non-toxic materials, um, but finger painting in lots of different ways um, is a great way to start art with infants. Um, language development. So children will use increased vocabulary in describing what they are making, what colors and patterns they use, and how the experience of creating makes them feel. Art also helps with cognitive abilities. So making art really connects the neurons in a child's brain because it's using all of their senses. Art also helps with decision-making capabilities and problem-solving skills. Art also helps with cultural awareness. So creative expression is very personal and it tends to reflect one's culture. So making and viewing art really broadens a child's awareness of diversity and the world around them. And lastly, it's fun. Children learn best through play and art is one of the best ways to play, whether it's painting, working with clay, making collages or drawing. And some ideas for you um, to do art inside and out is that you can really have nature be your art tools and your art palette. So some ideas for doing art inside is collecting leaves or anything else in nature that has a pattern or a texture, and it can be used for crayon rubbings. So you just put a piece of paper over the leaf um, and put the crayon sideways and rub it that way, and it brings all of those patterns to life. You can collect rocks and make a rock, paint them to make a rock garden, or paint them to make little people or different critters. So you can collect sticks and twigs and use twine or string to make three-dimensional art. Uh, you can put them and make them uh, mobiles to hang from the ceiling, or children can create sculptures. Uh, you can add natural materials to drawings to give depth. I mean, the picture on the slide is an example. So a leaf or a flower, um, for example, could be a body while the child either draws arms and legs and more, or they could add more natural materials um, or a blend of all of it just to create whatever, they, whatever they'd like. Uh, you can collect flowers or other materials to press into clay. And again, you can use leaves or other materials um, as a paintbrush or as a stamp. You can paint the leaf, press it on paper, and then you have your own little stamp. And then some ideas for art outside is you can have lots of fun with shadows. So children can go outside and they can trace their shadows and then use their imagination, <coughs> excuse me, to fill in that shadow um, however they would like to. You can try going outside at different times throughout the day so the children can see how the shadows move and change depending on where the sun is. So it's also a fun way to incorporate art and science. Any outdoor surface can be a substitute for paper. So you can use chalk on the ground that will wash away in the rain, or you can paint with water on walls or other surfaces and it just evaporates. You can use sand or dirt um, as a drawing tool to draw pictures or patterns and they can be just swept away when the child is finished. And you can ask children to collect all sorts of different natural materials and create a mural or a picture as a whole group project. And one thing to keep in mind um, with all of this nature is that we wanna make sure that all the children and adults are, are safe. Um, one of the important things to know is to know what plants and flowers are safe and which can be poisonous. 
Another thing to consider is that if you are thinking about having a pet or animal into the program or the classroom, that it is a Washington state licensing requirement that all programs have a pet policy. And to watch the weather. Remember to make sure to hydrate and use sunscreen for those hot sunny days, to stay inside during thunder and lightning storms, and have warm dry clothes available after the children are playing in the rain or snow. Um, and lastly, be sure everybody washes their hands every time they come inside. And the links to the pet policy and the list of safe and poisonous plants will be made available um, in the resources section when your coach mails that to you. Um, so next we're gonna talk about some ideas that you can use to incorporate into your outdoor learning environment. There are lots and lots of ideas online, but these are um, a few that I thought were really fun and pretty easy to do. Um, so the first one is you can make a mud kitchen. So all you really need at minimum is a board and some old pots, pans, or buckets, or any old utens kitchen utensils. This is something that you can ask parents to donate as well. It doesn't have to be mud. It can be whatever you have available outside, like sand or bark chips or even dirt. If you have an old table that is low enough for your students, you can utilize that or even an old child's kitchen that you don't mind being out in the rain. There are many examples of mud kitchens to look at online that will help you help spark some creative ideas based on what you actually have or you could think you can get. Another idea is to plant um, flowers or plants that are non-toxic, of course, and then to include natural materials outside, such as logs. Um, so consider planting abundant amounts of plants or flowers that you don't mind children playing in or around, such as sunflowers. These can be used not only for imaginative play, but you can utilize them as a teaching tool to teach about the life cycle of a plant or to witness how plants grow. This is a great way to involve children in digging in the dirt where they're gonna discover worms and experience more hands-on learning. You can also consider getting logs or any other large natural materials. Logs can provide many opportunities in so many ways. Students can balance on them, they can sit on them, they can roll them around if they're small enough, and they can even find bugs making a home in them. Um, to get some logs, you can contact your local landscaping or arborist company and ask if they have any available that they would donate. Another fun idea is that you could create a water wall. So um, if you have extra water bottles lying around um, that you would recycle, you could use those. And then um, you could just cut the bottoms off of the plastic containers and then attach them to a fence using zip ties or anything else that you can utilize to attach it to a wall, the wall of your choice. Um, this offers students a chance to observe how water moves and will provide endless fun during the hotter months of the year. If you have a sandbox, this can be adapted as well to work with your sandbox. Um, and lastly, um, you can find donating materials. So if you Google um, DIY um, outdoor environments, you're probably going to see some ideas of something you might actually want to do. And if you find something that looks interesting, um, you can identify where you might be able to find those donated products. So you could call your um, local public utilities company or a construction company and ask if they have anything available that you might be able to use in your outdoor learn door learning environment. And not only that, but they can reach out to you in the future if they come across anything that um, you may have requested in the past. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next month.